How's it going, Northwest Green boys? It has been an interesting start to this season. We are in the month of June currently, uh, midway through the month of June, June 19th to be specific. And we are sitting almost at the bottom of the AL West, eight and a half games back of the Astros and five games below 500. Now we started strong, we've been on runs and our last 10 were five of five, so that's good news. But, uh, you know, we need to start doing a lot better really quickly here. Now, I did go through and look, and of all our players, uh, in terms of negative war, basically the only people, our pitchers are fine. We've got JP Crawford, like a negative seven. Ty France is around there, and the injured Eugenio Suarez is there as well. Unfortunately for these guys, that's likely going to mean that if they don't turn it around by the end of the season, we might look to put them on the chopping block. Unfortunately for us, Abraham Toro is not a great replacement at third base. So we, you know, we just picked up Suarez. Um, we're paying him 11 million a year for the next two years after this one. Uh, but he is seven overall higher, uh, much better, much more powerful batter than Toro. So I don't know, maybe if we could find another third baseman somewhere else, maybe we should think about spending some money in the off season there. But uh, the guys listed, it's our third baseman, our shortstop, and our first baseman. They're certainly not safe. Uh, I have decided we are going to sign both of these two rookies, the starting pitchers that we drafted that are uh, very mediocre, but we'll give them a chance. Dan Bradshaw, try to lowball these guys a little bit. He thinks he's worth more. Okay, well, it's $10,000. It's not the end of the world for us. And... I guess we'll give $60,000 to Luis Esparza. But that puts us in kind of an interesting spot. And, uh, well, let's get through the rest of the month of June. We have a series against the A's, who are below 500 quite a bit in bottom of our division. A series against the Angels, who are doing pretty well so far this season. A series against Baltimore, who is a ways below 500. And then we go back uh, and host the A's. So we do have our critical situations back on, and we're going to start to sim through these and hope for the best. We have played better at home than on the road as we lose the first game, win the second game, and to finish out the series, well, we'll get a chance maybe to win this one in extra innings. It is Ramon Laureano at the plate. Bottom of the ninth, tied up, no out, says we're going to see what Sergio Romo can do. Expecting extra innings here, we're going to allow him to pitch this inning unless it looks like things are going to go disastrously. We have uh, Paul Seawald, and uh, well, he's warming up, but we might warm up Jose De Jesus as well, and that is a strikeout on four pitches. Designated hitter Seth Brown up now. We'll see what we can do. They have him in the four spot. Again, this is a team that is one of the worst in baseball right now. The A's, everybody knows. The problems going on with that franchise. Uh, hopefully we can um, just get walked off. Left that one over the plate. And Brown just ended it. That one is just really a shame. We lose the series. We get walked off there. And it helps out Oakland. And now we have to move on to uh, a series against the Angels. That uh, They're a much better team than we are. That's for sure. So let's see what we can do. Three games on the road. A win 6-4 the first time out. Eric Swanson getting that one. Fantastic news. Chris Flexen starting. Gets the loss. And the Braves have offered us a trade. I think we lost that 4-10, to which is pretty rough. They want to offer us Guillermo Herida, the center fielder. Uh, is he any good? He's not worth a whole lot. $1 million on the salary. 31 years old, 68 overall. Uh, you know... I'm not, I, I'm not like trying not to trade anything, but you guys know my feelings on older players. If they offered us uh, maybe Justin Dean, we could think about it, but they're not going to give up a prospect. And certainly, uh, man, do you think they would give us Ronald Acuna? Uh, maybe if we tried to scam him. Who did they want? Asher uh, Wojciechowski? I don't think I said that right, but I feel like we gave it a pretty fair effort. Starting pitcher, 700K. I'm pretty sure he's one of our prospects. No, he's 33 years old in the C potential. Uh, I just don't think that Guillermo's quite there. So while that one would save us a little bit of money, we will decline the trade. It was a 4-10 loss and now a chance to win the series in the final game and we lose it. Uh, end of the double A Central first half. It's good. 
Uh, how is our double A squad doing? 45-24. They've been on a bit of a losing streak as well. And the Rainiers, 41-31. So our minor leagues are doing pretty well. It's just, uh, once we get to the show, it's been kind of a struggle. Well, it wouldn't be one of these videos if we didn't have somebody getting injured. It's Adam Frazier, of course. Out for one to two weeks with a finger contusion. So hopefully, uh, you know, eight days he'll be back. We'll get Suarez back in six days. Logan Gilbert's coming back in 19. We're starting to clear out this injured list, but... Uh, it's a lot of starting players, uh, a lot of higher overall players that are out right now with injuries, so that's a bummer. Hopefully we don't need that depth when we run through this Baltimore series to start this homestand. We need to start winning games. 6-1 is beautiful. 6-1 is beautiful. We've won the series and we get the series sweep 10-7. We uh, desperately needed that four games back of 500 and closing out the month of June. We play the A's. That's a 4-7 loss. And now we get a chance to maybe play a little bit of baseball and see if we can walk these guys off. Ooh, it's a foggy day. JP Crossford 0 for 3 on the day. No outs with a runner on third. Down a run. What can we do? They're playing in. They don't want us to just uh, sacrifice here. But we're just going to watch him pitch around us. He probably wouldn't mind getting the walk. 167 average with runners in scoring position. Uh, we haven't really batted today, so it's been a while since we've done this. We'll see what we can do. Good strike. Honestly seemed a little bit slower than I expected. 92 miles an hour. He's full of energy, full of confidence. Guerra four pitches in. What can we do? 1-1. One, one. Circle change. A little bit slow. Dropped on me. And that makes it a 1-2. All right. What can we do here? Need this. Just poked it. Down the left field line. Thankfully goes foul. Still 1-2. Pitch 5. We foul it off. You know what? We just got to kind of fight here. If it's an obvious ball, we can lay off, but... Don't want to get struck out. And, uh, well, I said if it's an obvious ball, <laughs> we can play off. Uh, I guess that is not necessarily true. Out number one. So JP Crawford strikes out on a curveball in the dirt at our feet. Uh, that brings up Kyle Lewis. And I just, uh, we're going to just need to get lucky and tee off on one of these. He's throwing mostly off speed, but even his heaters are coming just 92 miles an hour at the moment. 0-1 pitch. Hits into the right field for a base hit. RBI single. Ties the game up and now a chance to walk it off with the winning run on first base. And we're kind of to the middle of the lineup. Ty France up. 72 speed on first. We're going to watch pitch one go for a ball. Guerra could find himself in a rough spot. Righty on righty here. As the fastball is inside for ball number two. I'm kind of expecting something that we can get a bat on here. Something down the middle. <laughs> it's that dang circle change up. That's not the first uh, episode that that's gotten me now. Quite a bit early as it's now a 2-1 count. Got to be careful for those off speeds. He puts the sinker inside. Just missed it. 2-2 two, two now. Not really wanting to try and steal a base here. Don't want the double play either, though. And we get a hold of it down the line. One. Oh, it's an error. So they'll get the out at uh, first base. Ty France a little bit slow, but it moves a runner into scoring position. The problem for Oakland is it brings Mitch Hanniger up to the plate. We know what he has done recently. Will they pitch around him? No double play in effect. That was first pitch, a great pitch to swing on with the fastball. Mitch has been hit by a pitch and walked in this game. As uh, a hit into the outfield gap wins it. This, this freaking circle change up, man. Batting 200 on the season with runner in scoring position. We're quickly 0-2. And we get a bat on it, but it's just going to be straight to the left fielder. Oh, honestly, that felt like it was a pretty solid shot. Not enough to do it. Kyle Lewis gets the RBI and will move to extra innings. But uh, a little bit disappointing. It is Jose De Jesus on the bump. Six pitches in. He must have pitched the ninth. We're going to have him pitch in the town. Oh, my gosh. 
first pitch gets away. Why, why is Jesse Winker behind the plate? Well, no wonder we aren't doing anything. He is well out of position there. Is there anybody else that potentially could be a better replacement in the position? Because that is that is really brutal. We might have to sub in Harry Ford, but I don't know. The damage could already be done. Wish that I would have realized that that was the case because I don't know if I would have gotten risky with the pitch, but unfortunately it doesn't work out that time. A good strike. Runner on third definitely has me worried. Anything will get him going. Even another pass ball potentially as we throw the cutter outside for ball two. See what we can do with the change up here in the 2-1 count. Hit straight to Toro. Out number one. Keeps the runner at third. Ooh, got a little bit lucky there. Shift is definitely on to prevent that suicide squeeze bunt. As we throw that cutter for strike number one. Andres uh, 167 with runners in scoring position is will deal another cutter directly down the pipe and he doesn't swing. So we get maybe a little bit lucky there and this could be dangerous. A sweeping curve hung over the plate, but it's straight to JP Crawford who's able to block it and get us out number two. Oh, this could be real lucky. They have made solid enough contact on both at bats to be able to get the run batted in. But we've just gotten lucky with the placement of the infielders and where they're just happening to hit the ball. First pitch fastball. First pitch cutter. Goes for a strike as we go to the changeup low for ball one. Really just like this cutter with Jose de Zeus. Feels like it's his kind of pitch. That one's outside for ball two. 2-1 two count. We're kind of hitting the meat and potatoes of their lineup now. So we don't necessarily want to walk anybody. That one called ball three and i just got to go back to it got to go to a pitch that i feel confident we can get in the zone he's gonna pop it up and toro's gonna be able to get the out no runs given up jose hey oh my gosh jose de jesus getting it done <laughs> we'll have a chance to walk him off with a runner on second it is the 50 speed mitch hanniger sitting back there as jared Keldnick comes up 0 for three on the day but it's a lefty against a righty and we're swinging first pitch it's going to advance uh, Mitch Hanniger to third. That almost snuck through. That was almost it. I do not mind swinging there. So we have the winning run just 90 feet away as Abraham Toro steps up. He has a hit on the day. I can't be looking for uh, a bunt here. We got to be looking to get just decent contact into the outfield. Anything, a sack flies enough. Hanniger with the 51 speed. I trust that he can make it home. Problem is we need to be able to like actually tee off on a ball and get it deep enough. And uh, let's uh, let's pause here. Can we take a look at the shift? Uh, we want to hit this probably to left field. Uh, Seth Brown, good fielding and reaction, but the lower arm strength and arm accuracy makes me a little bit more confident. Also, just feel nice to pin one on Seth Brown after that walk off he hit on us. That's not gonna do it. One one. We just can't. I can't send him. I can't tag up there. Too risky. Throw the plate was solid enough. Oh, that's a bummer. So Julio Rodriguez has come up to the plate. Let's uh, let's take a look here. We might want to go with a uh, pinch hitter. Yeah, never mind. We don't have anybody who's any better against a righty that is on the bench that's worth bringing in. So just got to look for our pitch and hopefully we can get a base hit otherwise this one's going on to inning number 11 oh one count pitch number two way outside uh you know uh, it's a tough spot if there's a pass ball there's a chance we send mitch but i think that's incredibly risky one one is the count looking for a walk if we can take it but if they give us the pitch we would definitely swing on it fastball outside ball two just need one good one that circle change has me worried. 2-1 pitch coming. And we were able to hold off on the circle change. There it is. The walk-off single. We get it done. We stay alive. Is that a series sweep? Or is this a different series? I don't remember. We get a win. That's all that matters. We pin it against the divisional opponent. And we get that much closer to going back to 500. Uh, it does not sweep the series. But it does give us uh, a tied series here. So we'll see what we can do. 40-44.
just so close to 500. Can we just get there? It is Nick Margevichus. Gosh, maybe maybe I got it right that time. He's starting 7-3 and three so far on the season with a 3-1-8 ERA. Looking really good through 93 innings pitch. He's not able to get the win immediately, but we're in the bottom of the ninth with a chance to walk it off. No outs, runners on first and second. It's our boy Billy Hamilton at the plate and Danny Jimenez, eight pitches in. I know he's already got a walk. I wouldn't mind them walking the bases loaded. Base hit here might win it. First pitch swinging. That's a tough one. Is it gonna be deep enough? No, Billy Hamilton, 29 power against righties. <laughs> that, if uh, we hit that with Hanniger, it's probably gone. But I didn't realize that Billy was so weak. And that's out number one. That is going to bring up J.P. Crawford, who I trust to be a little bit stronger with the bat. I was, I thought I swung. I just expected a sack fly and move the run into third, but it wasn't the case. 1-0. Pitches outside for ball two. We are very much in danger of the double play ball. And the four-seamer I'm well behind on. So that gives us a 2-1 count. He's looking outside. And there's that double play ball. I don't know if Crawford is quick enough to get there. It just barely gets onto the bag. So we got runners in the corners, but two outs. We need a base hit here. Not sure if that was the right pitch to swing on. It does bring up Jesse Winker to the plate, though. First pitch. Oh, I thought it was gone. Just too early. The 94-mile-an-hour fastball. And uh, it was not the play, so it's a bit of, bit of a shame. Curveball in the dirt gives us a 1-1. And the changeup were also way too far out in front of. Both pitches low and away. Should have been teed up on, but now we're in a one-two count. And I didn't feel, I didn't like that. Had to swing, fighting it off. Foul it away, one-two still. Danny Jimenez dealing. And we get on it for a base hit. Another walk off. Jesse Winker gets to the plate in time. They might have been able to throw him out if the uh, first baseman covered the bag, but we get it done. Ooh, that was kind of a tough one. Uh, interesting hit. Just the power to burn it past the first baseman. And we get another win. Three back to 500. Can we do it today? Ooh, it feels good to uh, get the series lead there. Three, two, back-to-back walk-off wins against Oakland. Not the team that we want to have to walk it off against, but we'll take it. 41-44. And we, we lose. Uh, Robbie Ray, he's uh, just kind of a disappointing. Five and eight on his record for the season. It's good ERA, a lot of strikeouts, but just not getting those wins where it matters. And now we have to play San Diego. And the Padres are looking real good. Uh, 05 loss and maybe a chance to win this one, but we won't hold our breath. On the road here, two outs, Ty France. Top of the ninth, the last chance to do anything here. And Drew Pomerantz, I'm, I'm worried. We'll see if we can get walked, but uh, I just, uh, I'm not feeling confident here. Looks to be a good chance. Beautiful day. That was a great knuckle curve to swing on. He hung it in the zone, but just uh, wasn't ready to swing. 1-1, one, one. gotta be ready now. But he just deals outside, way outside for ball two. Here it's uh, Petco Park. It's going to be tough to drive one out. Thought that was going to be one of those curveballs swung on it, but it's the fastball and we miss for strike two. Down to our last strike of the day. What does Ty France have? Well, not a whole lot. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a quick series loss. Uh, didn't expect to beat the Padres here, but we got to find wins somewhere. Yohinho Suarez is back from his injuries as we got an interesting... Oh, we got a trade proposal from the Red Sox. Rich Hill, the starting pitcher for Jose Caballero, the third baseman. Uh, I feel like this could be good for us. Uh, for, he's 42 years old. I'm sorry, Rich Hill might be good, but he's 42 years old and he's costing $5 million. He'll be a free agent next year. But that's... I mean, you guys know how I feel about age. And I'm pretty sure that Jose Caballero is... Yeah, he's not better necessarily, but he only costs us 50000 a year, and uh, he's 25. He's, I mean, that's almost two decades difference. If, if a team wants to offer us something better than that, we would be willing to accept it. Let's see what we can do against the 60-28 and 28 Toronto. Four-game home series against them. A loss in game one. 
And a chance to get the win. Paul Seawald, can he get another save? It's Vladito up, uh, but there's two outs. There's a player on this team that we should fear. It's obviously Guerrero. He has two home runs on the day. Oh, gosh. Paul Seawald, the man to stop him. First pitch, the slider just outside. Ball one. When you only need one out, it, it makes me feel a little bit more confident to pitch at him as, oh, what are you doing, Blue? Quickly, 2-0. I think I said 0-1 on the first pitch, but 2-0. We do get Vlad swinging there. Uh, let's go with the two-seamer. Low inside. We got him swinging 2-2. Two -two. He didn't swing at the slider on our first pitch. He is going to swing and strike out on that one. Got him looking at it outside. Got him trying to reach it, but he misses. And we will get a win against Toronto. That's a really big spot. And another save for, for Paul Seawald. Guy has been electric. It's honestly kind of impressive. I'm impressed that we were able to score eight runs in that game. Because that's unlike us. Uh, what can we do against uh, them? Game two? Uh, another chance? We, it's, this is not going to be possible. It is Jesse Winker up to bat. He's one for four on the day. But uh, two outs. Down a run. This is going to be really difficult. We might be able to get extra innings. Just need Jordan Romano to give us uh, a meatball to swing at. He gave it to us. Didn't make good enough contact. Late and low. Didn't expect that fastball first pitch. 0-1 count. Going to throw the slider way outside. We know that Winker can absolutely tee up on one, but we haven't had the most success batting with him. And that's ball number two. So 2-1. Two, Not really sure that should have been called a ball. Thought it hit the zone. And it's ball number three. Yeah, this is interesting. Because uh, you walk us, you bring the winning run to the plate. Tying run on base. And it's Mitch Haniger, but you never know. 3-1. Looking for a good pitch to swing at. Not afraid to swing, that's for sure. Anything to get a home run would be massive. And he's going to walk us. So Jordan Romano does get a favorable matchup against righty Mitch Haniger. But Mitch has done some crazy things this year. First pitch of the at-bat is outside for ball number one. In just eight pitches, we have seen lots missing the strike zone for Romano. That one's going to be... Oh, I thought it was a strike. All right, there's another ball. Ump on our side. Little home field advantage. 2-0 uh, pitch. Does catch the zone that time. You know, the way the ump is calling it, I could have seen that be ball three. 2-1 count. Runner on first. Two outs, bottom of the ninth, down a run. We swing at the low fastball and just foul it off. I'm lucky to have even gotten a bat on that one. 2-2, uh, two, two. down to our final strike. What can we do? I just, I thought it was low. Realized it was uh, in the zone too late. Swung too late. Missed the ball and they're going to survive. Chalk that one up as another loss for Robbie Ray, even though his ERA keeps dropping. And, uh, well, what can we do to finish up the homestand? Well, we can take a loss, but it's on to Washington. See what we can do here in what will be our final series of this episode. We're going to leave All-Star Week in the, the game or the series against the Rangers for next time out. But first off, a chance to push it to extra innings with Andres Munoz on the bump. We are back to uh, eight games below 500. And with Soto at the plate... We could get walked off here. No outs, runner on first. And another batter that I definitely fear, Chai France. Great scoop, and we're going to turn two. That's exactly what we needed. Oh, man, Ty France maybe saving himself a spot on the roster with plays like that. All right, Nelson Cruz also worries me. We know he could walk us off if we leave him a pitch in the wrong spot, but Andres, I don't know. I feel like we have the control right now. He fouls off the slider for strike two. And I'm going to give him that uh, high inside two-seamer. Swings and misses. Miss the zone, but we get out of that little jam and we can go on to the 10th inning. The win here would be massive. Kyle Lewis 0 for 4 on the day. We've got Mitch Haniger over there on second. We know Kyle Lewis is going to have pretty much no power here. We'll see what we can do. First pitch, a strike down the middle. Anything to put ourselves in a good position would be nice. 0-1 count. Sean Doolittle. 
gosh. <laughs> he got me there. The off-speed splitter, man. That's a hard one for me to lay off of. Just like that O2. He can do whatever he wants here. And he had the curveball. I think that was in the corner of the zone. We just missed it. That is not a good way to start it. Now we got Billy Hamilton. Who doesn't have any power. So we're just either looking for a walk here. Or maybe hoping to poke one into a little gap. Just a base hit. We certainly aren't looking to drive anything too deep on this one. Oh, one count. We foul off the fastball for strike two. Can we do anything is the real question. I don't feel confident, but... Whew, we watched the fastball inside for ball one. Still alive. I, I thought about swinging there. Thank goodness that we didn't. Doolittle trying to get out of his jam. And that was a mistake. Maybe not. <laughs> we could have maybe moved Hanniger to third, but I thought they were getting him as we strike out on it. It would have been great if the pass ball was, like, actually good. But now it's switch hitting Oswaldo Cabrera up. The short stop. <laughs> Dude, off-speed pitches are my kryptonite today. To Cabrera just batting 133, but I don't know. We kind of expected him to spend uh, a lot of time in the minors this season. So any uh, big league experience he gets is nice as he's... 077 with runners in scoring position. Not the guy we want to count on in a two out top of the 10th count. But good eye on that one. Gets us uh, ahead in the count here. Could we work a walk potentially? Or will he give us a pitch? He's going to keep throwing them inside. 3 1. Definitely a hitter's count. 11 home run hitting. Dylan Moore is on deck. Should we be able to find a base here? The 3-1 pitch. Swinging on it. That's going to be uh, enough to drive the run home. Winding him in. Hanniger will score. No problem. And Oswaldo Cabrera has done it. Giving us the lead in the top of the 10th with two outs. That was the walk that we needed to, uh, to get on base. That was a ball low. But, uh, man, I love swinging at a low fastball. One of, my, one of my favorite pitches to hit. Well, now we have Cabrera on for 77 speed. Dylan Moore, not the best batter again, but anything that we can do to fight as this one's going to be popped foul and should drop safely. A little bit scary. Soto charging after it. Not the worst pitch to swing at. They're going to try to pick him off. We're not going to steal here. Uh, like, I know what you're thinking, Sean, but I don't, I don't think it's worth the risk as they're just... This is absurd. Still just a 1-1 count as he's gotten us out of our rhythm, but maybe he's out of his rhythm as well. That's a tough one. Thought we had the splitter, but we miss. Just way out in front of it. The off speed has been a struggle all day long so far. 1-2. And he gets us with that curveball. We do have the lead, but it's not going to be easy as Waldo Cabrera able to get it done. We'll see if we can make it pay off for him. All right. Well, we're going to bring in Paul Seawald to try and close this one out. Uh, he's been warming up in the bullpen. He's facing a decent part of the order for Washington. Can't really give up a base hit, though. And first pitch is a low uh, fastball for ball one. Can we maybe get Bell with the high fastball? No, he doesn't swing at that either quickly. 0-2 or 2-0. I'm getting my counts all mixed up. Uh, it's Nelson Cruz, 14 speed over on second, as we do finally find a strike. And in this 2-1 count, catcher wants a slider kind of middle of the plate. All right. We'll try it. Ooh, get him to foul it off. Two strikes. See if we can land that high fastball inside the zone. Oh, he gets rung up looking. That should have been a ball. We get bailed out by blue there. That's just the... Paul Seawald effect right there. Cesar Hernandez comes up. And he's going to put one into left field, but Winkler should be underneath it. No problem. Fielding it. Not going to get it to second base in time, but it's two outs. No chance for a sacrifice fly now. And we've got Victor Robles up to bat. Righty on righty action favors our pitcher as he, we get the two-seamer in there for strike one. Better get him swinging on the slider. He's not going to go. Eight pitches so far this inning. Let's go back uh, high inside with a fastball. That's blown by him. Let's go back to that slider. Feels like we're going to get him to swing on one of these. Plenty of chances to pitch around him. Nope. Swing there. 2-2. Two -two. I'm going to go right back to it. 
I feel like we're going to tempt him to swing and miss. That one was in the zone, so he had to swing. But got him off speed, got him looking foolish, and we get the win on the road. Every single one of these games that we can take control of and win is important. I'm just surprised whenever we do well batting, uh, to be honest. That is save number 26 for Paul Seawald as we have one final game in this episode. Who knows if we'll get a play? No, it's a terrible one sick loss pinned on Chris Flexen, who has the nice 420 ERA. Unfortunately, though, that's going to have to do it for this episode. If anything, I feel like we have fallen further below 500 as we are now 11 games back of the Astros. All-Star week coming up in three days, but my goodness, I just don't think it's going all that well for us. Certainly a little bit disappointing as I, it's like we get a little bit of momentum going and then it's just a few really bad losses in a row that completely reset us. Unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Both of those things help tremendously to grow the channel. After you've done that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch, twitch.tv slash goonmaster. It's also links to our TikTok, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and our community Discord. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Grey Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.